John was all over the place. He would climb my entertainment. He was just everywhere. Real happy kid. Um, very ambitious, very driven, just, just all over. He's a boy all over the place. <laughs> John was about 13, started um, experimenting with marijuana. Um, you know, with the use um, came skipping school, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, I actually had him sent to a military school. Um, I had to pay, I think it was like 4,000, the state picked up the rest of it. So he went off to that and learned more stuff in there as far as the streets go. And, you know, this little place where I had had him sent. And um, from there, he just, things gradually start to get, you know, they got worse. They got worse. You know, we went from smoking marijuana to doing pills, drinking. As he got older after that, um, he ended up going to prison. He went to prison. Um, I just gotten him back September 27th of 2021. But, um, yeah, the drug use just got worse. I tried getting him help. I tried counselors. I tried everything, everything I possibly could. I just never got the help. I never, you know, the counselors doctors. It was like just no, nobody cared. I was a single mom. Um, and he just, you know, I, I worked all the time. So he was, him and his brother and sister, you know, were at home a lot. So just, we tried. I tried with the counseling and it just didn't work. Nobody wanted to help. So it was rough. He was at a friend's house. Um, he was, they had been drinking. There was a bunch of kids there. Um, supposedly he passed at one house and they ended up moving his body from that house to another house. Um, John was already gone. And during the time that they, they moved him, they had hit his head on the wall. He had scratches. Um, didn't have his shirt on, was already bleeding. Um, but yeah, he was on an ottoman after they moved him to the second house. And uh, in the report from the paramedics, they had worked on him for about 25 minutes. And um, we got a faint pulse back. That's how he ended up in the hospital. Um, he had uh, an acute cardiac arrest, acute pulmonary edema, um, global brain damage. And all of this was from illicit fentanyl. I got a message from somebody on Messenger and I called them back, and or I called them, and they told me that something bad had happened to John, and that he was at the hospital, and this is one of the individuals that was there. Um, so I got in my truck and headed to Big Spring, Texas, called my dad, called my youngest son, and I called my daughter, and asked them to get to the hospital and go see what's going on. Um, I got there, and the nurse pulls me to the back, sits me down, tells me that my son has tubes all over. And in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, he got into a fight or something. I didn't know. Um, so I get back there, and my baby's hooked up to a machine. He's on life support. He had no brain activity. He was... He was gone. He just... They had narked him seven times. 
there at the hospital. We had um, got a second opinion on his brain scan and said that there was nothing. There was no activity. So I had to, I had to make a decision on what we wanted to do. Um, they moved him up to ICU. Um, he was swollen. His heart rate was, his pulse was at 147. Um, the blood pressure medicine that they were giving him was making his heart go up really high, so I had to make a choice to let him go. If not, they were going to go in, and if he had another cardiac arrest, that would consist of breaking ribs, and I couldn't, I couldn't have my baby go through that again. So we let him go at 4.41 on April 4th, 2022. His case is still open only because um, they said they have to keep it open for two years. Um, there was foul play involved. Um, they just can't pinpoint on who did it. Um, even with John's phone evidence, you know, they just, they don't, go out, they don't investigate. I actually took it upon myself and talked to a lot of people. I had recordings of where my son was at. Um, I have written letters. I have emailed the detectives, would not get a call back. The only time they ever reached out to me is when they got John's report. Um, but his case is open because they said they have to leave it open for two years. I have grandbabies and I have to fight for for them. I have to fight for all the kids, you know, try to save a life, even if it is just one. Um, they saw my son as a statistic. He was just somebody else that they got off the street. John wanted to live. John was a good kid. He had a good head on his shoulders, despite, you know, the things that he had been through. He was lovable. He loved people. He he loved his life. You know, he left behind three beautiful kids. And I'm blessed to have that. But that's what he left behind.